in order to talk about before the revolution, I have to sort of think back to another time and put myself in the mind of another person. And that other person is, is me. I was 21 years old. It was 1964. And I was showing one of my short films at a sidebar at the New York Film Festival. So and there's a filmmaker who hadn't yet quite made his first feature, and I was wanting to. But I'm also there as a film lover, going to every one of the press screenings, absorbing everything I see. And this is sort of the first time I've ever gone to a film festival, and there's something a little daunting about it. Seeing so many films day after day, it's, it's a way of watching movies I wasn't quite used to. There were so many impor important pictures, too, at the time by people like Bunuel and Godard and, and Joseph Losey and the Mikas brothers and <clears throat> Sajja Ray and even uh, Carl Dreyer's uh, Gertrude. There was so much great cinema and so vital. But there's one film that stands out that jolted me out of my festival fatigue. Um, it's by a young Italian director, and it's called Before the Revolution. Immediately after the screening, I walk into the lobby, overwhelmed by what I had just seen, and I watch the press sort of gather around this young man in the lobby, uh, Bernardo Bertolucci. And I think about him and about that film and how it was achieved. Uh, of course, later I, I discovered he came from a literary background, and his reference points were Verdi and Stendhal, above, among others. And, I mean, this was a world that was completely foreign to me, of which I had no firsthand knowledge, which is why I was so surprised by the depth of emotion I experienced as the film came to an end. I'd say that I felt a connection with Before the Revolution on a profoundly human level. The beauty contained in the film, and it was breathtakingly beautiful, spoke to me directly and eloquently, and so did the overwhelming sadness of it. I was awed by his expressive power and by his celebration of that power, the sheer pleasure Bertolucci took in exercising his own creativity. And I was awed by his gift for cinematic invention, experimenting, looking for new ways to tell a story in images and words. Fearless, bold, elegant, you know, he tried everything and put everything in his film, put everything in it. But beyond the style and the power, Bertolucci had a unique ability to make me understand and empathize with people from his world, which I had yet to see and experience for myself. And the first time I saw it before the revolution was a formative moment for me, and the film has held up during the countless times I've seen it since, over the past 40 years. I mean, it never fails to inspire me, never. I mean, the last time I, I screened the film was only a few months ago while I was shooting uh, The Aviator in Montreal. Uh, now, it's inspirational for me, not necessarily for its style and inventiveness, but rather for the joy it contains, the joy of a young man finding his voice. Do I prefer it to the many wonderful films that Bertolucci since made after that? I, for me, the question is not preference. It's beside the point. The impact that Before the Revolution had on that young man so many years ago has never left me. It, it marked him for life. The young man I was in 64 was present at the discovery of a new cinematic voice, one of poetry and beauty and overwhelming talent. He was there at that moment, and it was one of the great pivotal moments of his life in cinema. Forty years later, we've all grown older. <laughs> Bertolucci, myself, all of us. Uh, but the film hasn't. And now it gives me great pleasure to present Bernardo Bertolucci's Before the Revolution. <laughs>